Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Wednesday, October 24th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Yesterday, Apple hosted a groundbreaking event in San Jose, California to debut a new line of products. What was revealed? Here to tell us more is SiliconANGLE News Desk editor Kristen Nicole. Welcome, Kristen. Hey, good morning. Kristen, we spoke yesterday with SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto about what we speculated would be announced at the Apple event. Taking a look at the Apple homepage today, it's obvious the big announcement uh, was that of the new iPad Mini, which did not take on a different name that had been rumored. Were any other major surprises, uh, or were most of the leaks turn out to be on point from yesterday? Well, a lot of the rumors did turn out to be true. It really seems like Apple might be losing its grip on this wall of secrecy they've built up around their product launches. We saw this with the iPhone 5, of course, and again with the iPad mini. So um, a good portion of the speculations and the leaks that we saw of in the weeks leading up to yesterday's event did, in fact, turn out to be true. What can you tell us about the new iPad mini? Oh, well, it's smaller. <laughs> little baby iPad. Um, it's just under eight inches, so it's slightly uh, bigger than some of the rival tablets that are um, closer to seven inches. Um, it's really thin, it's light, it's got the aluminum body like a lot of the Apple products do, so it's not made of the plastic that you'll see with the Kindle Fire and some of the other Android um, powered devices that are in this, this category here. So um, the display is good, the, um, the apps are still going to be from the, the tablet sector. So it's not going to be mobile apps on here. It'll be uh, optimized apps from, from the regular tablet market. The rumored starting price we quoted yesterday at 329 turned out to be dead on. When will fanatics be able to get their hands on the new iPad mini? Well, it looks like pre-orders start uh, on next week, October 26th, and they should be available in stores November 2nd, so uh, very soon. Along with the announcement of an iPad mini, Apple also introduced a fourth generation iPad. Uh, was this expected considering we just saw the launch of a new iPad this past March? No, I don't think it was really expected. Um, like you said, there was a, an iPad a third generation that came out not too long ago. Um, and one of the big things about the previous iPad, iPad 3, if you would like to call it, uh, it didn't have too many updates compared to the iPad 2. Uh, so with the iPad 4, you have uh, some more of the updates that we probably should have seen with the third generation. And here we are just a few months later with the fourth generation iPad. So um, it's got the same uh, display, retina display that we saw with the iPad 3, uh, some of the other specs, it's the same size, things of that nature. Um, what's different is the, the processor. Uh, it should be a little speedier. Um, and one key difference between the new iPad 4, fourth generation, and the iPad mini is they didn't take the opportunity to put that faster processor in the iPad mini. So uh, if you're debating between whether you want to get the new full-size iPad or the iPad mini, that's definitely something to think about. How will these new iPad devices compete with Android tablets and other competitors? Well, with the price at a three twenty nine, um, they are slightly pricing themselves out of the the direct competition with um, the pricing of Android devices. Of course, it's not entirely surprising given that they're Apple products. Uh, but I think that something in the closer to the two fifty range, or at least an option for something that could be priced around 250 would play a little bit better um, for those that are looking at the price. Um, I mentioned yesterday in my write-up right after the event, it was actually during the event, um, that the that this is really going to be about the ecosystem. Um, Apple is really looking to round out their device lineup, uh, their software offerings, and really close the loop on that and offer something that can still be in that size range that we're seeing proliferate with the Android market, the Nexus 7, the Kindle Fire, some of Samsung's phablets. Uh, so this, I don't think it's really going to be a, so much about the price. Apple really still wants to uh, keep themselves separate than directly competing with Android on price. Tim Cook announced an interesting statistic yesterday saying to date 100 million iPads have been sold. So do you think the iPad mini will have the same success? It could. We'll just have to see how, how the consumer market goes. It's almost um, holiday shopping season, so that'll be a great opportunity for Apple to uh, gauge the market and see what the interest is around this new 7-inch uh, tablet. Um, and with the, the size 
thing that's going on here. It is a little bit more comfortable to hold in your hand. Um, and the fact that they were able to use a full-size tablet applications on this new iPad mini, I think that will really help because now you don't have some of the issues with uh, the Android seeing in terms of fragmentation. Um, developers still have the opportunity to create one app that will work on, on all the tablets. So we'll see how, how the consumers respond to this new tablet size. Um, as we've seen with some of the other tablets in this size range, it could be extremely popular. Yesterday when we spoke with John Casaretto, we mentioned that alleged photos of a new 13-inch MacBook Pro featuring a retina display had been leaked in a Chinese forum, yet we didn't anticipate a new MacBook Pro would be revealed at the same time as an iPad mini. Did that come as a shock to you? It was a little surprising, uh, but once once the rumors started coming about some of the other devices, I think um, one of the rumors was that we were going to see a new Mac Mini come out at yesterday's yesterday's event. Uh, it's kind of indicated that we might be seeing more at the Apple event yesterday than just the iPad Mini. So in that regards, it wasn't too much of a surprise, but I think just the fact that they took yesterday's event as an opportunity to reveal so many product updates um, really shows what, what Apple is going after here. So with the new 13-inch, um, they've got the new Retina display. They haven't updated this particular line since um, early 2011. Uh, I, I'm not entirely surprised that Apple is kind of using this as a chance to further their, their lineup. With the new line of Mac Minis also debuted, any major announcements there? What was that? Uh, the new the new line of Mac Minis that they also debuted, were there any major announcements in that regard? Um, let's see. I actually don't remember too much about the Mac Mini now that I was just talking about it. It's kind of slipped my mind. Another product Tim Cook was very eager to announce was the next generation iMac uh, available in the 21.5 and 27 inch models. Give us some specs on those new iMacs. Well, they have the updated, um, they have better processors, they have the new retina displays, they're kind of catching up with some of the other updates that we saw earlier this year. So really um, rounding out a lot of the products that Apple already has in the market. And kind of, I think what Apple is really trying to do here is unify a lot of the um, consumer experiences across the board, although there's still a few disparities, like I mentioned with the iPad, iPad 4, fourth generation and the iPad mini but uh, really seeing a lot of catch up here. Something called the Fusion Drive was introduced on the new IMAX. Can you explain to us how that works? It should help with uh, booting things up faster. Apple's been an early supporter of flash technology, so um, being able to incorporate this into their, their all-in-one devices is just one more way that Apple is kind of able to stay ahead of the curve, set the bar on how the, the consumer interacts with, with the computer and um, has a little bit more and more power behind it. So we should see some improvements across the board in that regard. There were also a few small iBooks updates. Anything to talk about there? Yeah, well, with the iBooks updates, there's more options for self-publishers out there. Um, this is always a good thing. And there's uh, some new interactivity that's been incorporated into iBooks. So things like widgets that let the the reader kind of play around more with the content and you have a lot more flexibility there. Um, and there's some new templates available. It's important to note that these new templates do support the iPad portrait only. So this isn't optimized for iPhone quite yet. Of the new products announced, do you feel there was anything Apple held back on, disappointments or things we didn't see but we're hoping to? Well, we didn't see a whole lot on uh, Apple TV, so I, not that we were necessarily expecting it, but with all the other device updates that we saw, uh, we didn't. that was one of the products that we didn't really get a whole lot of information on. Yesterday, yesterday's event streamed live on the internet and was also available on Apple TV, but we didn't see that uh, new announcement hoping for Apple HD TV. Do you think that's going to be the focus of Apple's next keynote, or where where do you see Apple going next? It could be. I don't know if it'll be the focus of their next uh, their next event unless they're ready to move into the direction of home entertainment, which could be a increasingly competitive market with Microsoft's Windows 8 and their new Xbox Entertainment. All these things coming out for the home. Even Google with their event with when they launched the Nexus 7 came out with the Q. 
uh, geared towards home entertainment. So if Apple's ready to kind of make that leap, we could see something with Apple TV, uh, the HD TV, and maybe even some other products. People have been speculating about television sets from Apple for a little while now. Um, if, if they're, I think if it's going to be an event focused on that, it would be uh, targeting the, the home entertainment sector. Well, Kristen, thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. Thank you. And remember, you can follow the news of the day and get the latest breaking analysis on tech innovation at Newsdesk on SiliconANGLE TV.